Okay, so that's a lot of theory. Now I thought we'd have a go at putting this into practice. Um, well done for listening this long. So we're going to take a photo of this plant just in front of me, whatever it is, uh, a still bee. And we want to see what happens with the difference in the background. That's going to be blurring out or we're going to get a little bit of detail coming into that. So look, come around this side and we can have a look at the camera. Okay, so let's make this practical then. Um, we've now brought looking at the camera. This is all set up here. You're looking straight through the back of this camera. This is my 5D Mark II. Um, I thought we were going to get a B in the picture then. So let me just show you, this is the display. Now I wouldn't normally use this. I would be shooting through the viewfinder, but this is a great way of demonstrating. So over here is my shutter speed, 200th of a second. I'm on 7.1 as my aperture. And this is the important bit, this guide here. As I just touch the shutter button slightly, it comes back. Um, this is just telling me how many photos I've got. And as you can see here, ISO 100. Okay. Uh, so now this is, according to the camera, accurately exposed. I'm tempted to think it's slightly under here. Uh, but that's easy, I can automatically adjust that and set it one stop higher if I want. Um, so I could take a photo at this and we're good. Um, but what we want to do here is just see what happens. So we want to keep this exposed correctly. And what we've been saying to you is um, how we can do this by balancing your aperture and shutter speed, but keeping the balance right. Okay, so I want to take this down to start with. Now 5.6, as you can see there, that's not turning any more than that. 5.6, sorry, I can't help seeing that B on there. Let's just, um, is he gonna come and visit us? He's around there on that second one. <laughs> right, what I should have said as well, what I'm doing on here, because I know that I'm staying put, I'm manually focusing this. There's our little wasp B but I want to stay on this front one. All right, so I've manually focused on that. Zoom in to do so, come back out again for a bit just to show you the background. So I've now set this to 5.6 and it's telling me that I'm over, I've notched this up. We started at 7.1, I've done two clicks and you can see that dial at the bottom is moving two clicks as I move. So it's telling me that I'm two stops on this over. Um, so what I need to do is do my shutter speed, if you remember, we balance it back the other way. If I take that back, whoops, it's going the wrong way. If I take that back to, we're at 320, and again, it's telling me that we're correctly exposed. So I've now set this on, and this is an example of aperture priority. Well, I've decided that the aperture is the most important thing here. I'm not interested in how fast the shutter speed is, not really. Um, I just want this correctly. I, I want this um, a nice shallow depth of field on here. So I can set this at 5.6. Now my other camera, I could go to 2.8 on this. And some of them, even the 50 mil, which is a very nice one on the Canon, it's only about 80 pounds. You can go down to 1.8, so you can really knock this out. Now what's just happened, if you can see on that screen how dark that's just gone, and that gauge has told me I'm now at least two stops over is because a cloud has just come over. So we're hanging a minute, I'm not gonna try and compensate for that. If this was a real life scenario and I was out, I would just let that cloud pass and carry on. Now you're gonna be constantly changing up and down. So now we're back, we're exposed correctly here and our bee's gone off to the next plant. So 320 and 5.6 is the correct exposure. Now I'm gonna to have to move quick because of this cloud overhead. Let me try and show you what happens when I move this exposure, move the aperture, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I've moved two stops, which is six clicks. And what I need to do now is go the other way. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you'll see that's back the same. Now, if I take another photo, this flower here will be exactly the same exposure in both. Let's go a bit further. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm at now F22. One, two, three, four, five, six. And again, without the cloud, we would be correctly exposed. Now I can keep pushing this anyway, and we can get that exposure. And if that is set right, then that plant here 
is going to stay exactly the same in each picture. The only thing that is going to be different, see how the actual plant isn't changing, but what is changing is the, how blurred that background is. I hope that's coming out well on this display. Uh, really blurred there because as you can see, we're at 200. Um, let's pull the info up. Now we'll leave it be. 207.1 there. That's our furthest, 320 and 5.6. Really blurred out at the back. And I like that, that totally your attention is here. We take that to 7.1. You can see there's detail just starting to come in in these leaves, but this plant isn't changing. 207.1, 80 and 11. Still no difference in this plant. It stayed exactly the same in its focus but you're starting to see more detail. As we push it to 22, this plant's still exactly the same. We're on 15th of a second, so you couldn't do this handheld. We're on a tripod here, and to be honest, I would recommend that for anything like this anyway, macro shooting. Um, so are you seeing how this works? That um, by just balancing one against the other, you go in six stops up on one side, six clicks up, you come six clicks down on the other side. And we're totally keeping that balance, but it's giving you a chance to play with this. Okay, so now we haven't touched ISO, we haven't really needed to, but if I was hand holding, if I was shooting this by hand and I hadn't got a tripod, um, and I wanted this out at 25 as an aperture, 15th of a second is not acceptable. There's no way I could do anything with this and get a decent picture. Now watch what happens here when we, I've got an ISO button up here. Let me take this along. Now this kind of scenario in daylight like this, no problem to put the ISO up. In fact, have a play. The only way you're gonna really know what your camera does is to have a bit of a play with it. But as you can see, we've pushed that up now to ISO 800 and we're well overexposed. And what we're trying to do here is keep this aperture at 25, but we're trying to make our shutter speed acceptable. So now that's okay at 30, 30th of a second. I still can't hold it at that. I need really to have this ideally about 160. Now I know that this is um, seriously pushing the limitations of what you could do. I'm trying to expect that kind of exposure um, and let's see, will this cope? Yeah, it's more than coped actually, isn't it? We're over at that. And we're almost there. I'm just tweaking this to see where that lands. So there it is. So I have been able to do this. I could shoot this by hand if I had to. I've managed to get an aperture of 25, a shutter speed of 160, and I've achieved that by pushing this ISO. Remember I said it's like a brightness uh, overall. I've pushed the ISO from 100 up to 3200. Now your camera might not do this. Um, this is a 5D full frame sensor, which is going to cope better. But this is the Mark II in fairness. It's not the newest one. Um, the Mark III would be even better than this. And these are the kind of things, if you wanted to do this sort of work and you found you were being limited, then this might just be a justified reason for upgrading from one camera to the newer model. But hopefully that's just explained how that works. And um, I, I wouldn't want this kind of aperture on here anyway. Look what happens when we've totally overexposed it. We've just blown that out. And you're gonna panic at that and think, right, what's gone wrong? Um, just stop, look at your display. Okay, I've got my aperture, that's within range. Shutter speed's not bad. It's the ISO that should be jumping out at you that, wow, that's way too high. So take him down. Let's try 200. It's still overexposed. But that's lovely, because that means I can push up my shutter speed. And you see, if I was shooting, if I was here, like I did the other day, did a short tutorial, was handheld, wasn't on a tripod, um, this would be a great setting for me. 500th of a second, uh, f5.6 is lovely and blurry. And um, I'm just slightly over, which I think looks to me just about right. I'll take a photo there and we'll have a look at that on the 
video as well and you can see how that came out. So hopefully that's given you a clearer idea of how this can be used. Now we're shooting here on macro with a flower. This could be your child that you want to take a photo of in the park and um, you don't want the trees and the greenery in the background. You just want it to blur together and make a nice backdrop. Well this is exactly the same principle here. So all we've done, we've started with an aperture as a priority. We've compensated with the shutter speed. We've played with that aperture going from one extreme to the other. And then as we've found limitations, we've used ISO to correct that and help us out. Okay, but certainly don't be afraid to, in a daylight situation like this, push that ISO up to 640 easily um, without any problems of grain and noise very different to shooting at night time um, but in a daylight situation like this no problem at all there we go that's just my camera's had enough i'm sure you have too <laughs> so there we go thank you very much